Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question. Welcome, my dear students, boys and girls in grade 9. Welcome to episode number 13. Today in our episode, we are addressing a really serious problem that affects our life in cities. Please be with us. After this short break, we're going to be soon back. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question. Welcome back, my dear students. Just before starting our episode, I want to inform you that you can follow us daily up on our YouTube channel. You just can type, as you can see, www.youtube and you just type MOE channel. You will find all the episodes of all subjects for your grade and other grades too. It will be easier for you to follow up daily and regularly. Now let's move to our episode's content. Look at this picture and look at the number of lessons we should uh, cover today. As you can see, it's episode 13, as I addressed earlier, and this is unit 4, but be careful. Today we're covering lessons from one, number 1 to number 4, meaning 1, 2, 3, and 4, because they are really closely related to each other. That needs a lot of following up from you. Let's see the today's objectives or what you should learn after watching this episode. Number one, you should use new words in new meaningful sentences. That would be section number one. Section two, you would be able to describe life in cities. And number three, use quantifiers effectively with nouns. My dear students, we have a great and a serious problem we suffer from in our cities and almost every city in the world, which is the traffic problem, the crowdedness we meet and encounter every single day in our life. So what is the problem about the, those, this uh, problem uh, with the traffic? What are the reasons? That all we will know after learning the new words. But let's first see this picture. We have such a problem, the traffic one, because people do not respect the road signs, such signs you can see while driving your car in the street. Repeat, road sign. Repeat, road sign. It is a noun. We can see many road signs while we are driving in the streets. Let's have an example to clarify the meaning more. Let's read it together. We must follow road signs to drive safely. Yes, we should do so. Okay, now I want you to check the picture I'm giving to you now and tell me what does such a road sign represent? What does it mean when you see it in such a street? It means that this place is specially for pedestrian crossing. Repeat, pedestrian crossing. Very good, for people to walk and cross over here. It is a noun. Let's have an example to make it clearer for you. We can say that car drivers must stop at pedestrian crossing signs. Yes, car drivers must stop when, once they see pedestrian crossing signs. Okay? Also in our cities, people make a, a, a really serious problem while they are driving their cars or any vehicle. They drive their cars or vehicles dangerously, which may affect us by accidents. Repeat, dangerously. Again, dangerously, which is an adverb. Let's have an example on the word dangerously. Some young people drive dangerously. Very good, it is an adverb. What else? They also do not respect people who walk on pavements. You can see in the picture that there is a pavement. Repeat, pavement. 
Very good. It's a, a noun. Which example could we get on the word the pavement? There should be more pavements to make it easier for people to walk. Let's read the example again. There should be more pavements to make it easier for people to walk. Also, in addition to the driving dangerously and pavements, we can add another word, which is the one you can see in the picture, which is a horn. Repeat, horn. And as you can see, horn is a, a noun. What is a horn? When you read this example, you will know clear what is a horn. We cannot hear ourselves because of the loud horns. Car drivers keep running their horns in the streets when they need it and even they don't need it. Also, we can also add this word. Look at those two people. What are they doing to improve their health? They are practicing and doing sports. So the word here is the word improve. Improve, which is, which is a, it's, it's a verb. We can have an example related to our lesson. We need to improve city traffic. We need to improve city traffic. What else can we add on our lesson for today? We can add this statement. Listen to me carefully. Those problems we encounter in cities every day surely affect commerce. Cities commerce. I mean by commerce, which is a noun, the financial issues, money, selling and buying in a city. When a city has a problem, that affects its commerce. We can have an example to let you know more what is the meaning of the word commerce. My brother joined the faculty of commerce. He would be an accountant. Well done. Also, we would say that people in the past, life was so different for them. Why? Because they used to inhabit quieter places. Inhabit is a verb and it means to live in. We have an example on the word inhabit. Most people prefer to inhabit quiet areas. In addition to inhabiting quiet places, people in the past used to live or inhabit smaller houses, simple ones, more than the ones, the modern ones we're living nowadays. We call them settlement. Repeat, settlement. People used to live in settlements, small tents or small cottages, simple ones in the past. It is a a noun. Let's have an example now on the word settlement by saying settlements are widely seen in Palestine. Of course you know that out of the news every day. What can we see in settlements? After living in settlements people started to be much more modern. They started to specialize in more modern professions and jobs. So we would study the word specialize, specialize in, which is a verb. Repeat it, specialize. Let's have an example on the verb specialize, which will let you more know the meaning of it. My brother would specialize in heart diseases. As you can see from the picture, it seems like he's a doctor and he wants to specialize in heart diseases. Well done. In the past, cities in the past used to have narrow streets, not wide streets, just like we have nowadays. We call narrow streets in the past alleyways. Repeat it, alleyway. Again, alleyway. It is a noun, which means a narrow street. Let's have an example on it. France is famous for its alleyways. Okay, again, it's very famous for its alleyways. But in modern cities nowadays, we can see tramway, which is a sort of a new means of transport. If we can see it in most modern cities like Dubai, for instance, or Alexandria. We can read now the word tramway. It's one word, tramway, which is a noun. Let's read an example on the word tramway. There are no tramways in Kuwait. There are no tramways 
in Kuwait. Now, let's apply what we have studied so far in the following exercise. The first exercise is choose the correct answer from A, B, C, and D. You have to read the sentence carefully, check all the options given to you, and then decide which suitable word for your answer. Sentence one, you can follow the until you reach the museum. You can follow what to reach the museum? Settlement, road sign, tramway, or horn? Very good. You can follow the road sign. Now, if you read the whole sentence, it would be you can follow the road sign until you reach the museum. Sentence two. We can space our memories by doing puzzles from time to time, we can improve or inhabit or specialize or rise up. Be careful, my dear students, that all the given words are verbs. And actually, we need a verb to complete our sentence. You have to choose the most suitable one for the sentence. We can well done. We can improve our memories by doing puzzles from time to time. Now let's move to the second type of questions. This type of question would be fill in the spaces with words from the list. Now let's check the first sentence. My mother always advises me to walk on the walk on the Pavement, well done. My mother always advises me to walk on the pavement. Now sentence two. Businessmen tend to work in rather than any other field. If you do not know the meaning of the whole sentence, you can get keywords to help you find the suitable word for your sentence. Here we would have, for instance, the word businessmen. And also we would have the word work. Businessmen and work, the suitable word is well done. It is the word commerce. So let's read the example or the sentence as a whole. Businessmen tune to work in commerce rather than any other field. Well done. Now let's move to the second section in our episode for today, which is the sad book section. Now we would have three questions to know more about the details of that problem we talked about earlier, which is the traffic problem in our cities and how it affects our life in cities. Question number one. We would say that cities suffer from traffic problems. Now we all know what are the problems. What we need now is to, can you suggest some solutions? Can you suggest some solutions to improve life in cities? If you have such a question in the exam, you could say, first, we could build more bridges. It helps a lot in organizing the traffic. B, we would say, provide more tramways and trains instead of having single car for a single person in our society, we would have tramways and trains that carry a lot of people, provide more tramways and trains. The third solution we would have is apply laws and rules strictly. Of course, we have laws and rules, but we need to apply it more strictly. Now let's move to question number two. Where were cities developed? As I told you, we are now connecting lessons one, two, three, and four. Such a question is extracted from lesson number three. It talks about life in cities in general. So the question would be, where were cities developed? In the past, people used to choose and select certain places to start building and forming new cities. Which places do you think that those people used to select to start setting up their cities? Number one, these uh, used to select safe places. As you can see from the picture, there is a mountain and there is sort of a uh, fort up the mountain, which is a safe place for them. Also, people used to build their cities and set up, set up the cities along rivers. 
could you give me an example of cities or countries that were set up along rivers, for instance, like Egypt and Ethiopia? Number three, we would have cities around the holy places and religious buildings. Like what? Check the picture. Well done. Saudi Arabia, as a city or a country, was in the past set around, around Mecca or Al Kaaba. Okay, let's move to question three. There are many cities in the Arab world with historical significance. Give examples. I will let you know more about such a question. In the past, Arab cities used to have an import, historical importance. That's what I mean by historical significance. Could you give me examples out of your lesson, lesson three, about such cities? Yes, in your lesson, it was mentioned that Jericho, a, past, a city from the past, was the oldest settlement in the world. I'll remind you of the meaning of the word the settlement, which means the very simple cottages used to be set up in the past. Also, we have, would have Damascus as a historical significance in the past. It was the oldest capital city in the world. Jericho and Damascus are old Arab cities. Now let's move the, to the third section in our episode for today, which is grammar. I want you now to follow me up as much as you can. Maybe you would have prepared some pens and notebooks to note and write down your notes about our lesson. As I told you earlier at the first stage of our episode that we would address nouns and use quantifiers with those nouns. We would relate our grammar lesson with the problems we dealt with about traffic in cities in a very simple way. Let's read the first sentence. Cities are too crowded nowadays. We all agree on such a statement. Cities are too crowded nowadays. It is not only crowded, but too crowded. Okay, why? Look at the picture and get some reasons for such a statement. I would provide you with simple reasons. Reason number one, there are too many cars in the streets. Too many cars. Not only one or two or even thousands, maybe millions of cars in our streets. Too many cars. Reason number two, there are too few buses in this city. Too few, not enough number of buses. No, only too few buses in this city. Reason number three, there is too much pollution in this city. Pollution out of car and buses, smokes and factories. There is too much pollution in this city. Reason number four, that we, there are quite enough cars in the street. We need no more cars, quite enough. Also the reason number five, the streets are not wide enough. They are not wide enough. Reason number six, we need more roads in this city. More roads in this city. As you noticed, I highlighted those quantifiers for you to check them in the sentences and to teach you how to use them in the sentence and where to use it. The first sentence, cities are too crowded, I highlighted the word too plus adjective. That means you can use too plus any adjective in the world to say that there is too much, many of this, many quantity or a big quantity of this adjective. Too crowded. You could say too cold to drink, too hot to go out. It's too crowded to go out of the street, to the streets nowadays. Number two, too many cars, too many, which means a large quantity of something that you can count, which we call them countable nouns, like cars, buses, taxis, students, and books. Number three, too few. It means the number we have is not enough for us. You can use too few with countable nouns, too few books, students, or taxes. 
too much, which means a large quantity of something, but be careful, too much is used for uncountable nouns, nouns that you cannot address it by number. For example, um, pollution, uh, sugar, milk, such things or nouns, you cannot count it by number. Use too much with them. Also, we have enough. Enough money and also enough students. So enough could be used with countable and uncountable nouns. Well done. Also, we have the word more, which addresses itself actually. More roads, more pavements, more students, countable and the uncountable nouns. And finally, not plus the adjective plus enough to address something that you don't have enough quantity of it. Like we have in the example, the streets are not wide enough. Okay, now let's have an exercise to help you drill more on these quantifiers. Now let's start reading and answering. We're writing to tell you the results of our study of traffic in our town. We have found that there is traffic. Which word could we use with the word traffic? Well done. Too much traffic on our roads and there are space lorries. Which quantifier, quantifier could be used with lorries? Too many lorries. There aren't buses. It's a negative, so we would use enough buses. So people drive their cars everywhere in a state. Pedestrians find it difficult to walk because the pavements aren't wide, well done enough. And there aren't pedestrian crossing. Again, it's a negative statement. You should use enough. There isn't space parking. Parking, places, he means, but here he says parking, so we would use enough parking, so cars are parked badly and block the streets. Another problem is that there aren't space trees. Trees is a countable noun. You could use enough trees to help clean the air. Of course, you have to complete reading this, this uh, sentence to check which quantifier he actually needs. And the city isn't peaceful, again it's negative, you would use enough because it is so noisy. Space noise is bad for people's health. Noise, too much noise, very good, is bad for people's health. In particular, the motorbikes and lorries make too much noise, well done. So, to conclude, to end up with the results. There should be more buses and not as many cars, motorbikes and lorries. Now we are suggesting solutions to the problem. Be careful. We recommend that some buses are replaced with quieter electric ones. We also suggest that buses go often so people can leave their cars at home. We would use here more often. Well done. Finally, we think pavements should be made wider to make walking comfortable, more comfortable, and finally, space trees should be planted. More trees should be planted. Now, we're moving to another type of quantifiers. They are called indefinite quantifiers. It means they are not addressing a specific number or quantity. Let's deal with them through the given sentences. I want you to read carefully with me. You will learn it fast. There are some interesting places to visit in Hong Kong. How many those places are? We do not actually, because we said there are some. A certain quantity, indefinite quantity. Now, number two. Have you got any milk in the fridge? any milk in the fridge. If you notice, number two is not a statement, it is a question. If you want to change sentence one, which has some, into question, you have to change some with any, okay? So this uh, question, have you got any milk in the fridge? 
Number three, there isn't any sugar, sugar in my tea. Any sugar, if you notice again, the sentence is negative. With negative uh, sentences, we would use any. So with the questions and also negative sentences. Number four, all the players in the football team are from Spain. All, now we are addressing a very large number or quantity of something, maybe all of it. Okay, number four, five, many people visited the National Museum last week. I didn't tell you how many people or persons visited the National Museum. I also told you that they are many. They are not some, they are many. Okay, so let's highlight the quantifiers again. Some in the statement, which means a small quantity, not a big one. Also, any, which comes in two possessions, the question and the negative sentence. We would have all, which means a large number or quantity. And then we have many, a smaller number than all, but not mm, so little, just like some. Let's have now an exercise on those indefinite quantifiers. Choose the correct answer from A, B, C, and D. Number one, did she give explanation to what she had done yesterday? It is a question. What would you use in a question? Some, any, all, or many. Well done. The question we use, any. Did she give any explanation to what she had done yesterday? Number two. Space pupils participated in the sporting activities, but we could invite more, so we didn't have, we didn't have enough number. So we would say, Many pupils participated in the sporting activities, but we could, uh, we could invite more. There was a space for more pupils. Number three, students stayed in the class to finish their project. Most of the other students went home. Most, the larger number went already to their homes, but we would use now some students, a small quantity or number of students stayed in the class to finish their projects. Why? Most of the other students went home. Well done. And by the end of this exercise, we reach to the end of our episode. Let me remind you of what we have studied so far. We started by learning new words about problems and solutions of traffic of cities. Number two, we revised a few set book questions related to traffic and cities problems. Number three, we addressed two types of quantifiers, definite ones, too many, too much, too few, and so on. And also indefinite ones, in which we addressed some, all, many, and any. By the end of this episode, I just want to remind you again of our YouTube channel, which you can follow up us and our episodes on it easily. You can type YouTube slash MOE channel. By the end of this episode, I would like gladly to thank you for your efforts and see you next episode. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the questions.